On Sunday, Ukrainian forces destroyed a key road bridge in Russia's Kursk region, isolating Russian troops and civilians in an area about the size of Luxembourg, cutting them off from reinforcements. Russia confirmed this was the third bridge in the Kursk border region destroyed by Ukrainian forces in three days, disrupting crucial supply lines. The bridge in Karaj, near the River Seim, was reportedly struck late Sunday night. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said that Ukraine's military action in Russia's Kursk region proves Kremlin threats are hollow. We are now witnessing a significant ideological shift, namely, the whole naive illusory concept of so-called red lines regarding Russia, which dominated the assessment of the war by some partners, has crumbled these days somewhere near Sudja. Ukrainian forces have seized over 480 square miles and 92 settlements in the Kursk region, as per reports from the president's office. Despite gains in Kursk, Ukrainian forces are facing intense fighting in eastern Ukraine, particularly near Pokrovsk. Russian forces continue to advance, posing significant challenges to Ukraine's defense. Zelensky called on Western nations to remove limits on long-range weapons, saying these restrictions hinder Ukraine's ability to target Russian military sites. He emphasized that the outcome of the war depends on more decisive support from Kyiv's partners. If our partners lifted all the current restrictions on the use of weapons on Russian territory, we would not need to physically enter particularly the Kursk region to protect our Ukrainian citizens in the border communities and eliminate Russia's potential for aggression. The Kremlin announced a pause in peace talks with Ukraine following Kyiv's military operation in the Kursk region, though Russia's previous peace proposals remain on the table. Russian presidential aide Yuri Ushakov stated Monday that Moscow will not engage in negotiations at this time due to the ongoing conflict in Kursk. At this stage, given this venture, we will not talk, said Ushakov. Ushakov clarified that the decision to suspend talks is tied to the current battlefield situation. He added that Russia's proposals, including Ukraine, renouncing its NATO ambitions and ceding territory are still valid, but will not be discussed under the current circumstances.